So I really wanted to talk about this whole idea of self-love and selfishness just because I realize how it just really goes into the core of everything when we talk about confidence, when we talk about what, how we can even achieve in life, if we're even going to be successful by our own definition, whatever that definition is, if we could reach our goals consistently, no matter how big or small that goal is. And I think it really just all boils down to self-love and how much you truly love yourself and feel that you belong to yourself or if you have a higher power then whatever that is as well but i feel like it's so fluff when people say well love yourself okay great but how does that tangibly happen and when we think about confidence and we think about love i feel like it coincides with each other because if you don't love yourself you can't have confidence in yourself and what i love when people say of how to gain confidence is basically fulfilling the promises that you set out for yourself. Because when you think about you loving somebody else, when you think about do you feel confident in your relationship with somebody else, if they're the type of person who always makes all these promises, but they never keep it like, hey, let's have lunch. And then they last minute cancel on you. You know, there's always those people and you start to lose trust in them. You start to lose the confidence in the strength of your relationship. But why is that? It's because they keep breaking promises, right? And if, if that happens on the outside, then of course it happens on the inside where if you keep breaking promises to yourself like hey i'm going to go on a diet diet and then it turns out you just ate a whole bag of chips <laughs> then how can you ultimately trust yourself to fulfill whether it's this promise or that promise it really doesn't matter so ultimately making these minute small promises to yourself and keeping them every single time, building that trust, especially if you've abused yourself in some way, whether it's you gave into eating terrible food and you gained a lot of weight because of it, you became unhealthy because of it, and so now you don't even trust yourself. And, and that's a hard place to be, right? Uh, but what, or if it's because you've tried so many businesses and you've started this business, you started that business, you invested yourself in this program, that program, but you never actually made money. And, and so that is going to be another time that you're going to start to create distrust in yourself. But then it's also good to have goals that you know are tangible. And that is, that is the, parts that I feel like people don't talk about. It has to be tangible. It has to be tangible. And this is something my friend told me once where I have this idea, right? You, for example, a vision board, and you have this idea of yourself, whether it's just, oh, I have this image of myself, like in front of the, there's an ocean and I'm in my house. Uh, and then, you know, I have my dog and I have my kids, I have my husband and, and there's people coming over because we're, we have our business partnership and we're just negotiating out certain things and I'm just signing contracts. And now I'm talking to my people, my tribe, right? Things of that nature. And, and that is a great image to have, right? To go into the imagery and those image exercises, meditation. But that being said, without the tangible aspect of, okay, well, how much would a house that has an oceanfront view cost? And where exactly would I want something like that? Do I mind that it's in the Philippines or do I want it to be in San Diego, California, which the price difference is vastly different and what I have to do to achieve those two different things are vastly different as well. Uh, and then what kind of dog do I want, right? How many kids do I want? What kind of husband do I want? And e even when it comes to, okay, I want a business, da, 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 what specific kind of business, what am I known for? And, and the contracts, what does it actually say on the contract? And, those tangible things that we tend to not think about so much because it's it's almost so far, especially when we're talking about long-term goals that are 10, 20 years from now, it just seems so far away that it's hard to put it into numbers and okay, now let's work backwards. But I relate to this uh, as for retirement savings. And this is something I've just been looking into a lot was just retirement savings and for me, I'm doing the minimum, minimum, right? But that being said, I've calculated what I think I would need 
at the age of 65, not that I plan on retiring or not retiring at 65, but just for hypothetical, because you have to base it on something, right? So then I based it off of retiring age of 65, working my way backwards. How much do I need to save actually today, tangibly today, in order to reach that goal at 65? Because if I don't start saving today and I keep delaying it, the amount that I need to save becomes bigger and bigger. And because I don't have that compound effect, it's going to be actually harder and harder to save. It's not going to have that same effect, the compound effect. So it's the same thing that I feel like when it comes to goal setting is that we need to make sure that whatever goal we have or the image that we have in our mind, even if it's 30 years from now, that we actually jot it down very tangibly. And even though, yes, we can't exactly know what this is going to look like, that is going to look like, but we have to start somewhere because then there's no way of calculating backwards, just like calculating your retirement savings. You have to be able to work off of something. So just imagine that you know exactly specifically what you want and then calculate all of that out financially speaking what does that mean with with your energy if you're trying to be a multi whatever best-selling author then first of all how many books right and what does that mean what do you want that to do for you do you want to just write books or do you want to also then speak on stage is that uh, stepping stone to something else what do you ultimately at the end of the day want and then work your way backwards and then know how much time it takes to write one book one freaking book it takes so much time and then know what it takes to become bestseller especially if it's okay published traditional published book or do you mind if it's non-traditional do you mind if it's just an amazon ebook situation or do you want it to be traditionally published do you want it to go on the new york times bestseller or washington right post or do you mind if it's just the amazon bestseller right does, does that actually mean anything to you and if it does and if you think it does then what does that mean? What, where does that get you, right? If, if you want to be a professor potentially, then yes, a traditionally published New York Times bestseller is going to mean something versus an Amazon bestseller. It's, it's going to mean something very different if you are a professor and you want to make a certain amount of income, right? So there's all these different reasons why you want certain things. So if you could just jot it down and actually research what it actually takes and then all of these different goals that we have, if you can map out when you can do it, because you can't simultaneously do 10 different things at once because you're going to do everything very poorly. And then eventually you, you don't do anything. Then you mistrust yourself. You don't trust in your ability anymore, even though it wasn't ever about your ability to do something, but it was rather the amount of time and energy you're spending on one thing and another thing and another thing because ultimately you're not confident that you can put all of your energy into one thing for two whole years before you can move on to something else. Uh, I wanted to wrap this up with a Brene Brown quote because this really just, oh, it gets me. Okay, so Stop walking through the world looking for confirmation that you don't belong. You will always find it because you've made that your mission. Stop scoring people's faces for evidence that you're not enough. You will always find it because you've made that your goal. True belonging and self-worth are not goods. We don't negotiate their value with the world. The truth about who we are lives in our hearts. Our call to courage is to protect our wild hearts against constant evaluation, especially our own. No one belongs here more than you. All right, so with that being said, I hope that whatever your goal is, whatever success means to you, that you write all of the goals down just all of it, and then make it tangible, even when it comes to the people you're associated with, what tangible things that you want in that person, and just make it so it's something that's achievable and it's measurable instead of an idea or a vision of something. And then that way we can work our way backwards, right? So 
I challenge you if you haven't already, and even if you have, because I do this multiple times, because sometimes as we grow and as we learn different things, what we want in life changes. It doesn't stay constant. Even the minute things actually makes a huge difference. So I challenge you to write down what your vision is and what that specifically means on a tangible level. So we can succeed together in whatever that means to you. If you like today's content, then please like that like button, subscribe, and of course, comment below and just share some of your tangible goals so I know that you actually wrote these things down because I see the view counter <laughs> and then I see the comments. And really, when you proclaim it out loud and you hold that accountability to the world because now you typed it, it makes you more likely to actually do it because now you just claim that. And of course, we want to keep promises to ourselves because that is what creates confidence and that's what creates self-love and it creates the kind of person that we want to be ultimately that the kind of person who takes action constantly. So I hope to see you in the comments below and I will see you on the next video.